G'day mate, and welcome back to Dyson Sphere with me, Jetty. And today, today marks the mark of a new era. Because, in our previous episode, pre previous episode, we did a systems check. We fly, I flew all around the universe, double checked everything, made sure that, uh, helps if we go to entire star cluster, we go through our favourites, uh, made sure that we definitely had enough warpers, we definitely had more warper production than our consumption, definitely made sure that we were making enough antimatter fuel rods to make sure that we kept up with all our power concerns. Uh, also double checked to make sure all our sciences were actually running perfectly fine. They are, it would actually help if I turn on research. Uh, let's do another three extra construction drones yeah that'll give us 30 construction drones and make them fly a little bit faster at 39 meters per second and veins utilization it's only 76,000, and then we'll do another carrier rocket okay so uh we we, we went and we did a systems check we double checked that all our science were running fine our universal matrix were not actually running at full speed because we confirmed that it all came back to our critical photons. We're not making enough critical photons. The reason we're not making enough critical photons is, well, our Dyson structure around the Magna system, even though it's a type O star, there's just not enough structure to get enough power to make the critical photons fast enough. So we need a side project. We need something to, you know, to continue doing in the meantime. And what I really want to do is I want to Continue with the thing that we've been doing sort of in the background. So what I want to do is I'm going to want to, want to make some black box black box systems. And you might ask, Jenny, what is a black box system? Black box system is something that you can just feed materials in and it's going to pop out a final product. So rather than, you know, in the case of, well, uh, you want processors, okay? Rather than having to have a, a production line that makes circuit boards and a separate production line that makes microcrystal components and then have a third production line that, that does processors along with all the smelters attached, all that sort of stuff. What I want to do is I want to have a production line that just makes processors. And I want to bring in not the raw, raw materials. I don't want to bring in raw iron, raw copper, raw silicon. I want to bring in smelted items. So we're going to keep with the, the with the theme that we've been going with icy smelting, you know, doing all our smelting needs. And just have a production line that starts with a tower, feeds all the lines out, makes processes and bring the processes back into that same tower. So I want to do that over and over and over for a lot of the common things, a lot of the things we need a, a, a good amount of. At the same time, as soon as we have enough critical photons that we can expand science production, I want to do more science. So I want to do the same for science. Now, we've we've been doing this sort of already. Like we, we went and made electromagnetic matrix. Um, and that, of course, had, you know, however many labs we needed for a full belt worth of science, because that was my goal. And we brought in not uh, magnetic coils and circuit boards. We brought in iron, copper, and magnets and popped out the electromagnetic matrix. We also did that for, you know, the red science, the structural matrix, or yellow, sorry, the purple, the green. And even we just finished in the last 10 episodes or so making the very large process to make small carrier rockets. But, like, small carrier rockets, I had many, many small production lines were all linked up with belts. What I want to do this time is I want to keep everything to towers, okay? And if we need something to, you know, if we want to make another lot of small carrier rockets, for example, I will end up doing, you know, a production line that does this and one that does that and one does that. And then we'll use the towers, uh, we'll use the drones to fly things between towers. It's going to be a little bit of a change to what we've been doing currently. But yeah, I want to continue with black box production. On top of that, I want to share these blueprints with you guys. Because the devs have done a really good job. They've been imp improving the bl blueprints. They've been tweaking the blueprints. There's still some problems. There's still some teething issues. So I'm actually going to be sharing all these blueprints with you. I'm going to be sharing them one of two different ways. They'll all be on my Discord. So if you want to grab blueprints, Discord link will be on your screen right now. Head over to Discord. Grab the blueprints from there. At the same time... This is going to be the critically important one. They'll be in one or two areas. Either they'll be in the blueprints room, very, very easy, very, very clearly marked, or those that are like pre-release, they're still going through some, some growing pains. They need to be a little bit optimized. Those ones you'll find in a separate room. That one uh, will be the Dyson Sphere room. It's all Dyson everything Dyson Sphere. Again, people will be sharing. Uh, I'm assuming other people will also be sharing their blueprints because I've seen some really good production production lines from you guys so you can go over there grab the early access ones these are these are they're, they're not quite the final version but the first thing i want to share with you guys is my hub now my hub 
it's something we started back in oh, episode five or something in this series, and it's something we've we've continually improved on. We've continually adapted. We've continually improved, and as you can see, it makes everything okay. So it starts off at left hand bottom left hand corner, and it makes you know uh, thermal power plants, then boxes, then smelters, then miners, then power poles, and uh, liquid storage labs, of course, splitters. Uh, assembler 1 into Assembler 2 into Assembler 3, uh, belts of course, sorters as well, 1, 2, and 3, makes engines on site to make the uh, sorter mark 2 because it's the only thing, it's the, well actually I take that back, uh, engines, electric motors go into two things, they go into the water pump and they go into the sorters, so it does technically have two uses, uh, also makes good old uh, draggable power poles aka uh, wind turbines uh, makes the two different types of ships we need uh, also comes over this side and makes you know the uh, planetary logistics tower in the cell logistics tower uh, orbital tower uh, makes what are they called plasma exciters hey I got it right plasma exciters come down here to make a few different production items down here uh, also makes good old chemical plants are uh, the oh gosh Fractioner, Fractioner, takes me a second to remember some of these names. Uh, substations uh, also makes the accumulators which get fed into the order collector. So it makes a lot of the basic production things. And what I want to do is I want to share this blueprint with you guys. But I don't want to do this on my home planet because my home planet, it was, it was organic. There, there's definitely some mess here. Well, classic would be, uh, this, is, this is one that really, really bothered me. Uh, steel comes out here, takes a sharp right goes right along the outside of the build before coming up here and actually tucking in on the right hand side yeah less than ideal so what we're going to do is we're going to head out and we're actually going to go to a whole new planet a whole new star and we're going to head over to black box okay black box is going to be our new system and we're going to head there and that's where our production line is going to be so, first things first is get some altitude, uh, and then get up to speed, and hit the magic button. I'm going to head over there. Like I said, all these blueprints will be down, uh, well, it will be on my Discord. You can always find a link to my Discord down in the description below. Also, if I remember, if not, somebody will hopefully yell at me and post it there. Uh, you'll find it in um, the, hopefully, the pinned comment below at the same time, if, you, if, if it's all too much for you. Okay, or actually, I don't think I have the updated URL. Uh, you can try, you can try the the new URL that's working when Discord likes it to work, uh, which is discord.gg slash jettyplace. Nice and nice and simple. Okay, so we're going to come to this lovely icy planet. Uh, that is the North Pole. That is the North Pole slightly to our right. Uh, I need you guys to bury... Because the very first thing I want to do is I want to put down some power. Uh, which is going to be that one. Okay. So this is this is definitely a pre-release blueprint. I'm, I'm not 100% happy with this one. Um, basically because this is optimized for me, for endgame. And because the devs keep tweaking things and this belt is no longer connected. Yeah. It did work. It did work last update. Okay, so this is my North Pole. This is my North Pole for outposting purposes. So, on this, oh, this particular blueprint, we have, uh, of course, helps if I actually turn on remote demand. See, that's why it's pre release. Uh, cool. Alright, that's that problem solved. Alright, uh, brings in warpers. Okay, brings in warpers. You need to throw in some lo local logistics drones to fly warpers around a planet designed for outposting. This one is 100% designed for outposting. Uh, also has not wind turbines. Also brings in, uh, of course, any amount of fuel rods. Any amount of fuel rods will power up these lovely suns. Uh, let's just throw one in there to get you started. Uh, also has uh, two blank towers. So we have this one that's bringing in both uh, any matter warpers and, of course, good old oh i didn't want to clear that i just want to pick it all up uh foundations and then over on this side and this side both these towers are clear these are for bringing special request items and then of course we have this tower over here which is going to bring in uh well it's pre-configured to bring in uh interstellar logistics standard logistics along with orbital collectors along with big ships and in the middle tower we of course have belts uh, sorters, which are turned off, you might notice. Assemblers, which are turned off, you might notice. Power poles and miners, because this is this is my blueprint for outposting. So if I'm going to a new planet, 
and I need to do some outposting. I'm obviously going to need miners, no matter what. I'm always going to need belts. I'm always going to need power poles. I'm probably going to need some more logistics vessels. And, of course, I'm going to need power, and I'm going to need warpers. And, of course, I've got drones to actually fly the warpers around this planet. That's what they're there for. And that explains this blueprint. And, like I said, it will be available in my Discord. Now I need to find out where we're going to build. We're going to come out from this side. And we're going to drag that to, I don't know, there. And then drag it a bit further. Because the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, talk about that hub. That hub we were looking at earlier. So we're going to land, let's say here. We're going to bring up uh, my construction hub. We're going to bring up the main hub. Now, the main hub does, well, mainly everything. And it's actually upside down, so I obviously need to re-blueprint it. We want to stamp this as close to the equator as possible. It'll be beautiful. And we're going to dump that right there then. And this shall put down our main production hub. Now, you might notice this is a slightly different version of the one we were just looking at on the homeworld. It still needs some tweaks, which is one of the reasons we're building it here, and I'm showing it to you guys. Uh, because this is designed for my homeworld. So in my homeworld's case, I didn't really bring in, like, I, I, I didn't bring in circuit boards, you know, from, well, off worlds. Because I was on my homeworld. I had them locally, so they were turned off to bring in remotely. Uh, obviously, things to change. Uh, that's an output tower. That's an output tower. Uh, you're my going to be next. No, nope, you're also an output tower. Uh, you're an input tower. Hello, uh, you're set up to bring in everything, beautiful. Uh, you're going to be an output tower, uh, you're bringing in everything, beautiful. Uh, you're an input, well you're an output tower rather than input, you're going to be remote demand, remote demand, remote demand, and remote demand. Uh, we have a few belt mishaps where belts this seems to be broken in the current version of the game. Whether it gets fixed, I don't know, but in theory it should. Okay, alright. So, bots have finished most of the construction. We can call that, uh, good. Alright. So, a couple of basics we need to go through. Alright. Uh, as you can see, all the belts now have markers. This is something the devs have recently added. If I left click on a belt, I can give it an icon. We can call it that. And that way you can clearly see where things are meant to go. Now, this is still an early version of the blueprint. It will be available in my Discord, as I said. Until that problem with the blue belt being fixed and a few other things, I'm not going to be sharing it publicly until that's fixed. But it, well, I'm not going to be sharing it in the dedicated blueprints channel. But it will definitely be in the Dyson Sphere channel. So, as I said, discord.gg slash jdblaze. You can come jump on our Discord server and grab yourself a copy of this blueprint. So, as you can see, we're going to bring in raw materials. Uh, this one's an output tower. So, this particular tower has... I did put ships in there. Okay. This particular tower collects materials and then has them available to be shipped around, around the universe. Uh, that is the beauty of this second tower. Third tower. Third tower is actually a recycling tower. So this brings in conveyor belt mark 1, conveyor belt mark 2, sort of mark 1, sort of mark 2. And it actually moves these materials, uh, as you can see, follow these two belts, into these particular boxes. So this is obviously where the belts go, the sorters go to... Thanks, Tower, for getting in the way. Into that one. And the idea of this is this will output sorters. It will normally fill up this box. But then this belt is also trying to shove them in there to make sure they get upgraded. Because as you're wandering around the universe, as you're going through and upgrading old planets, you're going to find old belt Mark 1, Mark 2, uh, sort of Mark 1, Mark 2, which I, you'd really like to recycle. I know you'd like to recycle them. What you can do is you can throw them in any sort of tower, set them up for uh, remote demand, and a ship will leave here, fly out to that tower, pick them up, bring them back. They automatically get upgraded. We have another output tower. This is going to have your wind turbines, your splitters, your storage tanks, of course, the chemical plants, and the power poles themselves. Uh, helps if I add ships. You don't really need the little drones, but we'll throw them in anyway. Uh, this is a, yet another tower. This is going to bring in brick. It's going to bring in magnetic coil. In my particular case, I don't have magnetic coil in the network. It's something that I have intentionally, up until now, it's either been made on the home planet, or well, actually it's probably being shipped in from the home planet right now. It's either been made on the home planet and gone straight from build to build, or it is... Um, 
uh, it's made and fed directly into another build as with black box systems are going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw ships in these. Uh, I have no idea about electromagnetic, uh, turns out electromagnetic turbines are in the network somewhere. Uh, we need to throw ships in here. This is, well, again, this is an import tower, so it's going to bring in all your raw materials. It's going to feed them into the build. Uh, I'm now noticing that belt goes over those. Well, see, that's another little optimization fix we could make. Okay. Uh, okay, so we have that, we have that. Uh, this is another output tower, so it's going to have your logistics drone. I'm going to actually up that to 400. 400 I've decided is a much better number than 100 at a time uh, so logistics drone, logi logistics vessels sort of mark 2 uh, conveyor belt uh, well, sort of sort of 3 conveyor belt 3 and assembler 3 and you have ships and of course we have you and you uh, which is going to bring in our graphene our energy matrix and the energy matrix uh, has one very important process it pops out this belt it goes all the way around the outside and comes straight back to here. And the reason it does that is literally so you have a red box on the planet so you can see it from a mile away to know exactly where the construction hub is. And of course we have our, uh, our last tower which is going to have all our logistics towers along with the oil extractor and the oil refinery. But you may notice there is some high-tech equipment that definitely does not exist in this build. So, if we come back over here, we go over to buildings, you don't notice, there's no artificial stars. There is no particle accelerators. There's no fusion reactors. There's no ray receivers. There's no EM rail ejectors. Uh, there's definitely no uh, silos. So there's a few things in this build that don't exist. Uh, that's because this is this is really designed for your, your mid-game. When you get to the very, very late game, you're going to need a slightly different blueprint. So what I need to do is I need to grab that from there, keep dragging our power poles, uh, whilst we just let that finish, not so much building, but um, stocking up and deciding what is in the network and what is not in the network, because as you can see, some of the stuff got delivered instantly, others took a bit of time. Uh, actually, I don't think I need to bring that any further. I do need to shrink that and shrink that because my second blueprint is under the construction hub it is the secondary north pole now this blueprint is um large uh, I need to line things up no keep rotating keep rotating keep rotating that doesn't line up at all Go. That still doesn't line up. See, the devs wouldn't have this nice, nice little feature. Problem is, I don't think it always works. Oh my gosh. Uh, you're off by tile. That's still off by tile. How can something lock in a place and be off by a tile? No, 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 no. I'm looking at the tower at the south, and it should... One of these towers, one of these positions, it should line up directly on that dark line in the middle. Oh, oh, highlighted line. Ah, uh, nope, still off. Okay, we're just going to accept that this one is going to be slightly off and there's not a lot I can do about it. Uh, yeah, it, it, ooh, what are you, what are you, oh, there's, is that water? It's not water here, is there? Oh, there is. Okay, fill that in real quick. Uh, bury that. Ah, oh, that's probably the water it's complaining about. Okay, attempt number two. Uh, construction hub, uh, North Pole, we shall line up one of the internal towers. Like, it's, it should not be possible for this to lock. And it's one tile. That's what makes it so bad. It's, it's, it's not... It's slightly screw with. Not thoroughly screw with, just slightly. It 
sure. There's still water. Oh, more. Okay, are we good yet? It, it sort of gets to the point where you just like that click, just whichever way you go down, click. Done. Okay. Alright, so let's talk about this from this view. Alright, so this is, is, is my North Pole. My North Pole from my home world. Okay, it does a few things. One, as you can see, it makes a whole bunch of power. On top of that, all these towers around the outside are actually designed to make the other few items that it don't already make in the main view, uh, in, in the main hub. On top of that, it does have these lovely towers here, which I'm definitely going to be turning off. Uh... Yeah, no, I'm going to turn them off. Uh, these lovely towers here, which of course produce science, run science through these this inner ring of labs here, which then output higher quality science, uh, being of the white variety, which then rub it, run them into uh, this lovely stack of labs we have here, which of course process the universal matrix into actual usable science points. All right. So, with that out of the way, I do need to uh, obviously run a bit of an upgrade planner over parts of this, because it says I don't have the green belt, because I definitely don't have green belt at this stage of the game. Uh, Alright, and then I need to find... There's one tower that's special. There's always one that's special. Aha! So... This lovely tower here, we're going to start here. This one brings in warpers, okay? It brings them in local demand, and we're going to turn that off. So it brings them in locally, okay? Also brings in uh, the power, and there's one thing that I'm going to add to this. It's going to bring in... We're going to bring in red science, so we're going to bring in blue science. We'll set that up for remote request, and we're going to set that to be blue science. So we're going to bring in blue science, which will go around a lovely ring uh, to make the uh, the... Thing. Well, to make everything pretty. All right. So then we're going to come on to well our first production line. So our first production line, and as I said, this is an early, early, early preview example. So obviously it needs some tweaking. Uh, first off, it's going to need a whole bunch of ships. Uh, is designed to make uh, fusion reactors. So fusion, mini fusion power plants, mini fusion power plants. Okay, brings in all the raw materials turns them into mini fusion plants, outputs them to this lovely box here, which is capped to one slot, and then shoves them back in the tower so I can request 100 out to any planet that I happen to be on. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. Next one is going to do solar panels, okay? Brings in a moderate amount of both iron, copper, and of course, uh, silicon. Outputs solar, uh, solar panels. Has many boxes to fill up in case I need a, suddenly a a vast amount of solar panels and then also outputs them into the tower so I can then request them out to other planets and again it's going to require just a few drones to get up and running all right next tower on the list is good old artificial stars now artificial stars again brings in those raw materials uh, can we just change all of those across to remote uh, you know what we're even going to set that up to be remote uh, we'll throw those in there, those in there. We'll change you as well. Not that you'll actually get anything from local, but that's the way I want it blueprinted for you guys. So these just request from anywhere they can possibly get it. Uh, and yes, same story. So this is going to make artificial sun. It's going to keep 100 in the tower. Plus it's going to have a couple of stacks here. Um, they're stacking 20, so there's like 200 in here. It might sound a little bit too, too much for you, but you know, you can always come in here and recap these boxes if you want. Uh, but same story, designed to make artificial stars and make sure they're available to be shipped out to the greater network and the greater world. Uh, of course, we have rocket silos, same story. We're bringing in the four raw materials, we're then outputting it into a chest, only keeping one stack because. I can't remember how much they stack in, but we also have 100 in the tower, so they're going to be requested out. Now, you might say, Jedi, I don't really want 100 rocket silos. Uh, unfortunately, bad luck. Bad luck. 100 is the lowest you can cap these things to, so there's not a lot I can do about it. If I could, like, if I could cap them to 50, I would cap them to 50, but it is what it is what it is, okay? Uh, and of course, we have uh, the very, very same with uh, the good old EM rail injectors. There we go. There's power turned on. Uh, we have... Uh, this one's a little bit interesting. The ray receivers. Ray receivers actually require five items in. Okay, 
because they there's that blue science going around the outside making sure we can see this from orbit because hang on let's go grab uh more drone set you to 400 uh remote demand there we go so because this requires uh sorry because the ray receivers require five items you can see it is built right beside the miniature particle collider because the super magnetic rings actually go at two different paths one is of course sitting in this machine and coming out into the particle collider the other one is a sneaky belt that tucks over here to get over to the ray receivers on top of that uh miniature particle collider same story and it's five items so we have processors jumping out of this builder and sliding over here um, so just a cheeky little thing that I've done with these two particular builds. Uh, are those drones here yet? It should be that one. Yes, I have all 400, please. Uh, so I can put them in here. Uh, we need to top you up and top you up. Uh, you're good to go. We are doing the same with uh, good old labs. Now, labs is... And, and there's a couple of these. Labs are a little bit unique. Um... I don't... I, I'm already producing labs, if we just try and zoom in correctly. I'm already producing labs right here, okay? So, labs are already made right here. But I have a limited amount of towers you could fit into one area. So I intentionally chose, rather than trying to squeeze another tower into already a very, very tight build, to try and get labs, uh, fractionators, satellite substations. Yeah, I think they're the three items are out. I just built a whole set, separate setup, okay? Uh, the idea is the first one is labs for your early game. This is labs for your late game when suddenly the idea of requesting 300 labs is just, it's normal. It's normal. It's nothing to, nothing, nothing to think too much about. And same with the box. The box is not really capped. Okay. Uh, that brings us on to our lovely, lovely uh, plane filters. Uh, plane filters are a, a very expensive item that I have just set up. Do I want remote demand? Not really. Technically, it needs to be. Okay. Uh, oh, really? I'm now out of the other type of ship. Uh, can we go to that? Nope. That tower. Nope. It's always the wrong tower. Uh, grab that one. Okay. So, uh, plane filters. Plane filters are, well, plane filters. Yeah, they're super, super late game. Uh, and same story, they have, well, I think I've got 200 in here, 200 in here, and a, a what's that, 500? 500 in the box. Um, I haven't started playing with plane filters yet, but I know we're going to sooner or later. Uh, we also have, and this is again a, uh, this is, this is uh, good old water pumps. Now, water pumps um, just require iron, which we're shipping in. They also require bricks, which we're shipping in. They also require circuit boards, which we're shipping in. They also require electric motors. Electric motors, I didn't up until this point have in the universal network. So as we're already shipping in iron, and it only needs rather than bringing engines, magnetic coils to make engines, we're just making engines on site to make good old water pumps. Water pumps, yeah, after you've put, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 on a water world and 20 30 40 on a sulfuric acid world you're pretty much done with water pumps for life so there is a hundred in here plus there is a few in a box um it's it's enough to get things up and running uh of course we have uh remote remote or local 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 and remote uh of course we have the good old fractionator fractionator again I, I already had the build down there but there was just no way to squeeze things in neatly so i decided we'll just have a whole brand new build for fractionators also means i'm shipping at 100 at once where they have a one percent chance to convert hydrogen into deuterium so if you ship at 100 you use all 100 in theory you have a 100% chance because you've used 100 of them. And then we're back to original tower, which of course is bringing the warpers. The warpers flow out and they flow daisy chain tower to tower to tower. Uh, on top of that is bringing the fuel to run the lovely artificial stars and also bringing in some blue science, which literally just goes around and around and around. So we can see this from orbit. Uh, help if we had some red science. Where is our red science? Let's go find out where the other build's up to and what it does and does not have because that's going to make our decisions about the next episode where we're going to be starting with our uh, black box okay over the back is where red science is 
is... Is it just because I'm requesting in so little? Because we definitely have red science. At least we should do. Production. And we don't. That looks like a bit of a problem. Okay! Something for us to investigate. Or me to investigate between episodes. Because it was fine. It was fine one episode ago. Okay. So as you can see, production has started. Okay. So we can see most of the belts are full. We are missing some crucial items. Uh, one I would say would definitely be gears. Another one would be... Let's look at that tower. Nope. Uh, another one would be uh, quantum chips. Quantum chips. Quantum chips, up until now, I haven't put in the network. I have been doing, as I said, a black box method because they go into a few buildings, which we're making on a home world, so I didn't see any reason to put them in the network. And they also go into the gravity matrix, which again, if I'm making them anywhere else, like on one of the Magnar systems. One of the Magnar systems is definitely making uh, the quantum chips. They go straight into the gravity matrix. They don't actually enter into the logistics network. And we're also missing, well, red science, uh, crystal silicon, and that seems to be about it. So what we're gonna do is just demonstrate. Uh, do you have three, four, Oh, no, actually, I don't need those. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do is just to demonstrate uh, the thought process, at least, uh, because we're not going to have a lot of time to build a lot in this episode. But we want to make gear, not steel. We want to make gears, okay? And I have a couple of limitations I need to stick to. And this is something we're going to be doing throughout all this series, uh, or this little mini-series, is I want to definitely have warpers, Okay. Which, in my case, and these are the way these blueprints will be supplied to you guys. They're going to be bringing in locally and remotely. Okay. Also, when you guys get them, these will be set to both storage. Okay. Uh, uh, no, they'll probably be just set to local supply. Yeah, they're probably going to be set to local supply. Okay. The only thing I'll do is I'll set up uh, warpers. Oh, maybe I'll just leave that blank as well. I will set the max down to 100 if I can hit the right number. Okay, uh, so when you guys get the blueprints, what you're gonna have to be, well, what you what you will know when you get the blueprints is we will fill out a lovely little description here. So I will fill out a blueprint description of exactly what it produces. But in the case of gears, let's just bring out our belt of iron. Uh, and this will be the case for all the black box builds is they will be limited to 120 items out per second. Okay, that's gonna be crucial. Because I do not want to try and overtax a tower, having it bring out, like, you know, it has 12 slots. Just because it has 12 slots does not mean you should use 12 slots. So I don't want to try and bring out 12 slots worth of iron to, well, 6 slots worth of iron to make 6 slots worth of gears and try and pop them back in the same tower. Because the logistics vessels will never, ever, ever keep up. So I found the maximum is about th is about 4 belts. It's about 120 items per second, which is really what I want to keep to. Uh, so even if we're doing something complex like processes, which require multiple different components... I'm still making sure that I'm keeping under 120 items out of the tower per second. Um, whether it be processors, whether it be electric motors, electromagnetic turbines, structural matrix, doesn't matter what it is, that is gonna be my limit. So in the case of iron, okay, uh, I wanna bring out one whole belt worth of iron because that's the other thing. I don't really want to go over a single belt's worth of output on these towers. It's probably going to be easier to just put down two towers or you're probably a smart cookie. You, you could probably just, you know, have one build and then, you know, blueprint that build around if you have extra throughput. Uh, so, for gears. Gears take one second to make one gear. We have some of Mark 3s, so they actually make one and a half per one second. That is eight. Uh, if I bring that belt out, that belt back, and I put two more on the end, that's ten. Okay, if I have ten running at one and a half, uh, one and a half, a craft speed of one and a half per second, that means that's actually going to be producing fifteen gears and using fifteen iron. If I double the whole thing, we're now using thirty iron and making thirty gears, and that's 
going to be exactly how this build runs. So we just need to apply some power poles. Now, power poles and... and this is the joy of blueprints. The joy of blueprints and the joy of Dyson Sphere being a square grid on a round world. It's going to be a little bit difficult. I'm going to choose to put power poles through the build and hope that when you guys choose to use them, you don't try and put them too high up the planet where the power poles suddenly won't fit. There, there's limited things that I can do when it comes to, you know, trying to trying to do my best to make sure things fit. Okay, uh, so we're going to do uh, gears with cap lock, caps lock the wrong way around. Uh, blueprint is going to just go and call it gears. We're going to give it a very complicated symbol of a gear. And we're going to call this uh, 30 gears per second from 30 iron per second. Okay. That's the whole blueprint. That's the whole name. It's nothing too complicated. I'm going to close all that down. And then in my case, I just need to set up remote demand. I'm going to set up a local demand as well. Not that there's anything locally. Uh, we also need to add in little drones, big shippies, and that should be this build up and running. So what we need to do is we need to wait for icy smelting to ship across some iron, which is sort of lucky. And this is why I chose this system because it is a stone throw at just six light years. It's it's within that very first starting cluster of our, our home system tacker and of course icy smelting. So we should. Come on. Come on. Don't make a liar out of me. Hey! I'm willing to bet that's a few ships full of iron. Come in here. Drop in the iron. Yep. That's a lot of iron. And it should start pumping iron through. We should start making gears. Of course, the gears are going to be shipped out straight away into these towers. Now, another thing you might notice is uh, on my exports, I'm definitely going to be setting 100%, 100%. I do not want uh, ships leaving unless they're fully loaded. On my hub, whole different story. They're set to 10% and 1%. Because if this thing doesn't have resources, uh, you can't expand. And this is one of the reasons I've gone and re-blueprinted this whole thing on a whole new planet. Because I'm now in the very, very late game where when I was laying down like smelters two episodes ago, three episodes ago, on icy smelting, I couldn't get belts fast enough. Okay? Even though, in theory, that whole box should be full of belt, that whole line should be full of belt, there should be 2,000 belt in here ready to go, 2,000 belt in here ready to go, I could not get belt fast enough because I went through about 30,000 belt in 20 minutes, just laying down smelter after smelter after smelter. So I decided, rather than try and improve a build that I already had up and running, we were going to do one better. We're just going to blue, blueprint the whole thing, come out to a new planet, dump the whole build back down, and that should double my production rate. At the same time, one other thing I do want to do is I want to head back to our North Pole, which in theory, shortly I won't need, because we'll be making everything on this planet. Uh, set that up for remote demand. Set that up for remote demand. So I can definitely come up here and grab a whole bunch of foundations at once. And because this is our black box system... We're going to have a custom blueprint, uh, that one, which shall be all black, uh, all black, uh, with that design, I believe. Yes, that design. And what I want to do is, as we're filling up the planet, I want to just, you know, foundation the areas that we've done, because we're on this lovely, bright, glossy, glary white planet, and I would like to, as we continue along, just, just, you know, cover the areas that we've done in black because it's our black box build. It's our black box little mini series. And we're going to leave the first episode with the hub up and well blueprinted. I wouldn't call it running. Uh, there are a couple of materials we're missing. One of them being, you know, red science. I don't know what the story is with red science. I'm going to check on that between episodes. Uh, and what else was missing? Oh, crystal silicon. Okay, crystal silicon is funnily enough something i don't actually have any anywhere in the system because it goes in two things one it goes into accumulators which like i said on my home worlds i have everything in my home world so i just made it on my home world uh the other thing it goes into is particle broadband particle broadband literally goes to purple science and into assembler mark threes which again on my home world sure Anywhere else, no. Particle Broadband doesn't go into the network. So I'm going to have to set up a temporary build somewhere on this planet, which is one of the reasons I chose this planet. Has it just a drop of crystal silicon? Fractal silicon. 
just a drop of fractal silicon right there which I can set up to get that build up and running. So it does mean next episode. Next episode, I think, I think we're gonna have to fill in these blank areas that I missed. Uh, I think next episode we're going to have to, well, now we've got gears up and running. Yeah, well and truly. Uh, okay, let's just double check some production stats. Uh, I want local planet. Yeah, just negative, 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 negative gears. Let's go with one minute. 1,800. Oh, that's a full belt. Yeah, that's a full belt. So 1,800 per minute is a full belt worth of gears. So we're doing a full belt worth of gears. Uh, I think next episode, we're either going to... I think we might move through the sciences. Because I think that's what will help you guys the most, the quickest. And it also means we're going to be able to tick off a lot of production lines very, very, very quickly. Because, you know, there's a lot of production that needs to go into all the different sciences. So, I'm going to leave the first episode here. Uh, this is the introduction to our little black box mini series. whilst we wait for, well, a lot of rockets to launch. Hey! My red science has arrived. Uh, come on. Come on. Around the loop you go. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. Excellent. That's what I like to see. Which now means, from the map view, you can see it very easily. It's also why the North Pole, which is on this particular planet, on the South Pole, but that's besides the point, it could be on either pole, has also done the exact same with the Blue Ring. So you can see it easily from space, so you know exactly where to crash if you need to resupply uh, with items. So, with all that said, I'm leaving the episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in for Black Box Series. Like I said, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. Now is definitely a great time to do so. At the same time, like the video, share it with your friends, because... I, re I really, really hope this series is going to help you guys not only design these blueprints, but also if you want to grab them, like I said, a handful of time now, times now, they're over my Discord server if you want to grab them from there. Uh, either grab the final release versions from the blueprint, nice and tidy room, or grab the early editions from uh, the Dyson Sphere room. Anyway, with all that said, calling here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. And do me a favor, tell your mum. JD said hi. All right, that's it. We're out. Bye.